Chili. That's the C H L I. Um, on Instagram and Twitter, and go ahead and like tweet with us as well. After the panel, we will be having a Q and A. So please, if you have any questions, um, we'll be letting you know when the Q and A will start. And so to, uh, to kick off the program, I'd like to introduce our Chili President and CEO, Marianne Gomez Porta. Thank you for being here. 
Um, next is uh, Christina Mason, Senior Manager of Government Affairs for Dish Network. Thank you, Christina. Um, and next to her, we have um, Saul Hernandez, Vice President of Government Relations at NCT, the Internet and Television Association. Um, and then to his right, we have Augusto Valdez, a partner at Kid Street. Before introducing our moderator, let me please um, give me a couple more minutes here to recognize our sponsors uh, who could not make this series possible without. American Petroleum Institute, PG&E, Amazon, Chevron, Accenture, Apple, Charter Communications, Vicenta Square, General Motors, Intuit, Kid Street, the National Association of Broadcasters, and NME. Media. Thank you again all for your support. And I'm thanking the staff now, because what happens is after the Q&A, I always say goodbye and I forget. So I'm doing the first, but I'm going to get this first. Um, so first thank you to Gabriel Montillo, Angel Puma, Emily Martinez, Christian Cubas, Nico Marin, Maite Sanz, Giovanna Avalos, Tyler Keen, Abeshla Jimenez, Julia Castillo, and Sasha Ferreira. Again, thank you everybody for being here. A reminder that this program is being recorded. I'm going to ask Felix to come up here while I say all these wonderful things about him. So Felix Sanchez is the chairman and co-founder of the National Hispanic Foundation for the Arts, um, NHFA, a veteran media and communications expert who consults regularly on Latino programming and content. As a response to COVID-19, Felix, being the creator and innovator that he is, started Inform and Pick, a web talk series aimed at bringing current and relevant information to the Latino community on topics like the pandemic, floods, wildfires, earthquakes, and other natural disasters. As the NHFA chairman, Felix led the fight to desegregate the honors and awards programs of major cultural and entertainment institutions. It was very interesting watching all that news unravel here in Washington. His work resulted in major administrative and personnel changes at the Kennedy Center and with the new Latino honorees at the Kennedy Center honors, just to have some other work at the Oscar. Um, along with the induction of 22 new Latino members into the Association of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences, also known as the Oscars. He was also the force behind convincing NBC Saturday Night Live to hire Melissa Villaseñor, the first Latina cast member ever in the show's then 47 year history. So please join me in giving you a wonderful round of applause, not only for this. Apple, um, Netflix, of course, 
Um, even some of those are going to be consumed by somebody else. Um, I think the smaller ones will have to be part of something bigger to be able to uh, survive and sustain themselves. But I, I do, and I don't think TV broadcast cable is going in for the next few years. Uh, good afternoon, I guess it is. Is it good morning or good afternoon? After <laughs> yeah. uh, It's five o'clock somewhere. Uh, we, uh, my name is Christina Mason. I am here on behalf of Dish Network. Uh, you guys may know Dish, traditional satellite company. We've um, been content to viewers for the last 40 years, but we're actually right now in a major uh, growth and pivot in our business where um, we have our traditional linear um, you know, platform, but we now um, have Sling TV, which is uh, an exciting new streaming platform that we'll talk your ear off about today. Uh, but we're also uh, building out America's first 5G open brand wireless network. In shorthand, that just means that we are building a wireless network that has never been built before. It is um, one that is not kind of like your traditional Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint. It's completely new. It's um, built in the cloud. It's a very exciting project. Um, and to answer your question, I think from Dish's point of view, what we are seeing, what we would like to see over the next three years is aggregation. So we, like you said, we have all these um, various platforms, um, various um, pathways to get your content. The key desire is going to be the platform that can aggregate all of the content that all these providers and, and, and um, put them all in one place. That's what Sleep is really driving. Um, the market on is trying to bring all of these channels together in one place with these. So, Christina, is that the new cable? Um, no, but it's not. Because it's, <laughs> it's wireless, it's especially it's hopefully we'll be on the digital side channel. Is bundling sort of the, the, the cable bundling of the future? Um, you can say that. I, I don't want to go far into our panel already, but um, what Slink offers is more flexibility than the traditional. Um, cable provider, and that, that's not um, to go against any of our colleagues there, but essentially the way Slate's model is is that the consumer can pick and choose the channels that he or she would like to, to subscribe to. Um, so instead of getting 800 channels and half of them, not even half of them, you're only watching 10, you can subscribe to those 10, and because of the market dynamics of Slate, and, and we'll go into it more about some of the ads that we're able to give that flexibility to consumers because we're able to have that business structure with content providers on our side. So it's a really exciting time uh, where we can provide regional programming, we can provide uh, you know, really customized packages for consumers that um, allow us, the consumer to save money, um, allow us to, to really kind of change the paradigm. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Saul Hernandez. I'm uh, Vice President of Government Relations at NCTA, the Internet and Television Association. We represent cable operators and cable programmers. Uh, and uh, many of them are, are, uh, are in the uh, are in with us today. Uh, I spent the lion's share of my time working with uh, members of the tri caucus and members of the Energy Commerce Committee. Uh, in uh, educating uh, members and staff uh, about uh, how great the cable is and how great our program members are. Um, and to answer your question, Felix, I, I think personally, and this is shared by other folks in my building, that I think that traditional linear cable is going to experience renaissance in the next three years. Uh, oftentimes, and I, not necessarily a show of hands, but just a personal experience, you're, you're, you go to an app, uh, shall remain nameless, you're scrolling, 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 trying to find that show that you want to watch. There's something great, and then you have to remember what app it's on. Uh, something's really great about being able to turn on your television, I'm a Comcast subscriber, uh, who has the uh, X1 technology uh, box. It is a truly fantastic piece of equipment. All of our companies have pulled out something very similar. 
where you can talk to the remote, and tell the remote what show you're interested in seeing, and take you to that channel. But uh, oftentimes, when you are flipping through the channels on your traditional your cable, uh, uh, cable box, you uh, will come across a show that you've never seen before, and it'll, it'll pique your interest. And so I think that um, there's a great value in, in uh, linear cable uh, in, in the sense that uh, it opens uh, it opens up to additional uh, content that you may not have been familiar with. Oftentimes, when you are going and looking on an app, you're searching for something in, in particular, as opposed to having the opportunity to discover something new. That's not to say, though, that, that streaming uh, does not have a, a huge place uh, in, in the marketplace cable uh, and, and programming and content delivery is evolving uh, at, at, a, at a pace I think that we haven't seen before. Uh, and so, um, you know, it's, it's important to meet our customers where they are, but at the same time, it's about uh, convenience uh, and access. And I think that uh, that, that uh, traditional people, uh, in addition to uh, streaming options, give you that. Last night, as I say to you, the president talked about companies and included the cable early termination. What do you think about that? I, 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 uh, I did hear that part of your speech. Uh, all, there are uh, often, I think that that is an, uh, in, in, uh, in, an outdated um, uh, rubric that, that uh, is not often um, uh, you know, used in anymore. Uh, there are opportunities to, uh, to change packages, to downgrade, uh, to, to downgrade packages, to upgrade um, uh, often without So in this uh, partner of uh, Producer Networks, uh, we own and operate full cable networks, uh, Kids Free, um, for kids three to seven years of age. And uh, uh, in English, but I call it is a, a Chinese old channel. So uh, Spanish speaking people yeah, you know, uh, learn and events you know, their, their life in the United States. Um, there is to be a very for for ESL learners uh, operating our status is uh, our two um, time and money. Uh, so you know we're dish currency and, 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 and charter currency. And you know it's a great way for them to uh, to learn and, and you know watch the media and tough on and you know you know entertain and learn, right? Uh, so that's a uh, that's a uh, uh, one of our channels the other key streets is that you know for food based uh, Print proof. Um, we try to uh, fill that gap uh, where, where you know, content is supposed to teach with values to kids, and in a lot of other channels you don't find that. Uh, we offer that to parents, parent approved environment, um, and we partner with uh, Common Sense Media so that you know what we offer to the, to the viewer is uh, is kind of reviewed and, and uh, you know top notch. Uh, we, you know, we're a small company and uh, launched our channels, you know, within that five years, six years. Um, and uh, what do I think about uh, TV in the next three years? I think it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things, like all, those, all these uh, apps and packages and classes, uh, eventually, you know, everybody thought that, you know, you could choose a uh, pick and choose what you want, and, and now we have to pay, like, 10 different bills. Uh, the industry has never, uh, you know, has never had more revenue than, than today. Uh, it is almost like 75 billion, you know, on the, on the traditional PPE side, and then like 55 billion on the OTP side. Uh, so, you know, obviously most people are spending more money. Uh, I agree that it's going to be consolidation. Uh, the delivery method is also going to change. The reason why maybe you know, there is a disconnection of fees and stuff like that. And a lot of these companies put a lot of money into their equipment, you know, and, and that equipment is not free. So, you know, you can also, also that I mean, I mean, to the cable companies that, you know, they, they, they spend uh, 500 or 1,000 dollars to start, you know, the connection in your house, and they eventually want to, you know, recoup that money through time, right? So if you disconnect within that window, I mean, they, they, they kind of need the money back to get it. But the good thing about the new technology is that, you know, you, you may not need a box. And, and, and with that, cost should go down. There's no cost of equipment. And potentially, if the consumer is willing to pay the same, you can have more channels. Um, hopefully, one thing that's going to happen is that we're going to have more diversity of ownership and more diverse uh, uh, content from a you know, point of view and cultural perspective. Uh, 
So how does contraction and um, helping or hurting the you get distribution for your channel? You mean that uh, post-donation foundation? Well, you know, it's, it, there is there are 300 channels of our many out there, and 90 percent plus of them, you know, belong to four companies, and uh, those companies put a lot of pressure over, you know, traditional companes like, you know, like, uh, like Dish Network. Dish has to deal with them and, and pay them more for more channels that people really want to watch. And then when an independent that like, uh, strikes to go and launch a channel or have an idea, it's, it's impossible to, to get, you know, space is easy now with a bunch of pay for your channel. The difficulty is money, and those more progress stay all the money. Yeah, I, I totally hear you. I, I know that there's a movement in Congress uh, to talk about the independent programming tax credit legislation. And I was wondering, if Michael, if you could uh, tell us what that's about and, and why you support it. Thank you. I think that's something that's extremely important, um, specifically in today's um, The idea, specifically, like Lucha was saying, where, you know, I have access to a 200 channels right now on my cable operator, and I probably see maybe 10, maybe. But of those 295, 195 percent of people will come. When then it goes to the dish, the right to be the charge or whatever, the either package or provide or offer a new package network, one more. There isn't all of the, the dollars are going to these corporations. Look at what the, the NFL is signing with, you know, with their million year contract. All that money is going to those groups. What does that leave us? The idea behind this tax credit is, is really to create a, a partnership with the cable operator through these minority owned and operated uh, networks where you agree to carry X network, there is a, almost like a, a refund, if I can be so you know, open, that there is a, a give and receive where you're given the opportunity for this small, this minority uh, channel, the chance to get their content out there. We are very, very, convinced that when we get launched, the perceived value of our content will be such that you'll want to continue to carry us. And we've been lucky enough um, recently to have been launched on, our band was launched late last year on, on Spectrum. So that's a great score for us, or a great partner. We've had a lot of success with Comcast as well, taking on one of our, our, our third youngest network, Primo TV, um, moving us to HD in full package delivery. So there's an appetite for this type of content. The argument of we don't have the dollars anymore with this type of tax credit, and I think I can share some thoughts on this also, kind of takes that out of the conversation. So it's a, uh, I mean, we're trying to remove the, traditionally there were two issues with uh, new channels in a cable company. And when I say cable, I mean everybody, pay TV, right? Uh, Space, bandwidth, and, and, and costs. Space is now an, an only issue for the most part. It puts in money because of what you know, Michael was saying and was trying to think for about those four environments. So what the tax would do is like it would allow a cable company, a pay to be, a pay to be, uh, you know, an MVP, uh, to launch uh, some channels. There is, there, is a, there is an indication as far as how much money could go back to the cable company. That, the cable company will pay, you know, the negotiated fee to the network, and that money will be refunded by the network. Uh, why? Because all of this has about, you know, a lot of transactions to happen and mergers, and all these companies are in fact, like, two names, like, you know, it's like, uh, uh, NBC Universal, uh, you know, Disney ABC, there's one percentage of that merger. Um, in, uh, by doing that, it's, it's removed the you know, it's removed an opportunity for the for the small guy, you know, the, the, the minority you know, the women you know, the small business. So this will give us the leverage we won't have today to negotiate a, a, a decent deal. No one wants to have a channel, you know, for free. If your channel offers value, 
Class of University and from kids. Or, you know, we, we come, you know, we won awards, we have good viewership over here, but when we go and try to expand our viewer, our distribution, the answer is like, good, I will do it, but I don't have the money. So this one's remove that and then um, uh, put it out, you know, companies like Edition Network or Compass, not only to carry our channel, but any other new idea that creates out there. You know that uh, linear television really excels when it comes to sports and when it comes to news. And we've just seen that the NFL deal, which is twice the size of what the previous one was like, is coming under a, a, a different kind of setting where subscribers are going to have to pay more, and yet there's going to be less subscribers to see this content to begin with. The money is coming out of programming. If it comes out of programming, how does that help us develop Latino content in the next three years? <laughs> well, it doesn't. <laughs> You know, I think, I'm not going to remark on, obviously, deals that were done. Uh, we, we didn't have anything to do with that, on that dish. Uh, but it is an interesting paradigm, paradigm where you're seeing, uh, especially sports. I think we can all agree, sports is kind of an anomaly in the programming world where uh, it is it's, its own thing. Uh, and so now we have this scenario where they're going to talk about YouTube. You know, perhaps this does allow a little bit more opportunity, uh, flexibility, what I, I was going to say, um, you know, we don't have a position on the, the legislation, but anything that gives us more flexibility, I think echoing the sentiments um, that we are bad by, you know, some um, big blockers that uh, don't give us the flexibility to really negotiate with some of the smaller guys. And anything that gives us the flexibility to, for example, Sling allows us the flexibility to put this content there. Uh, so when you see shifts, major shifts in where content is being um, held and what platforms are, are delivering what, I think that's opportunity. I think we should look at it in a positive sense where um, maybe this is an opportunity for us to kind of um, reevaluate the paradigm and see how we can use this opportunity to elevate especially Spanish-speaking smaller voices. That's what the goal would be. So if it gives us more flexibility, if it means using Sling, um, we, we have a little bit of a, a headline tomorrow, we're announcing some major um, programming areas, um, including um, fast TV, so free ad um, supported television, um, which allows us to many, many, many more Spanish channels, uh, API content. Uh, it allows to bring a lot more diversity of voices. Um, so perhaps this is an opportunity where we're shifting the paradigm to see, um, to give more bandwidth to the smaller guys. So how does a 2 2 FCC impact Uh, net neutrality has been uh, has been an issue for a very long time. Uh, there have been the FCC has been able to get quite a bit done with the two two commission, um, and I think that both uh, Republicans and Democrats on the Hill and, and those at the FCC would, would agree that they had a lot of success moving things through with the two two. Uh, but uh, I would I would suggest that that the net neutrality rules went away six years ago. Uh, and there were, uh, I, 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 would, I would ask, you know, anybody uh, if their service has been degraded in any way with, in, in the absence of the rules. Uh, have they, uh, have, has anyone had the um, challenge of accessing um, uh, lawful content easily? Have there, have there been any blocking from the prioritization of those things that exist? Uh, if, if a uh, customer, if those things were to happen uh, to many of our, uh, to many of our member companies' customers, those customers would go elsewhere. It's, it's obviously in, in the, in the um, operator's best interest to deliver to the customer what it is they want, and that is superior service. And so the idea that um, that the absence of net neutrality rules uh, are, are degrading anybody's experience, um, I, I, I think. Um, so how can Hispanics take advantage of video markets today to 
tell a story that are important to our community. I want to know that. <laughs> it's, I think it's, uh, it's, it's difficult, you know. It's, uh, there is there's a lot of voices out there that cannot be heard because they don't have a distribution method. And it's true that there are ways to, to uh, you know, produce a show and put it out there, you know, through a barrier of entry, through, you know, deep into or for the internet. But everybody can produce something once uh, return. You know, you want you want a lot of eyeballs and you want to you know make some money because that's it's a it's a company your job for profit. Um, I don't think I don't think uh, I, I I think there are ways to put your content out there. The difficulty is in the uh, the, the, the uh, economic proposition. There is there is very little ways to monetize. Um, whether you can sell it to existing channels, which you know are not going to pay a lot of money because there's a lot of product out there they can buy. And obviously, it's hard to just go direct to consumer because you, I mean, the barrier of entry is low. But when you have companies, uh, big companies, or, or, or you know, say Disney Plus or Partner Plus, when you try to you know put your content out there to an OTT you know, app or service, uh, if you have a million dollars today in marketing to be busy, you know, they're going to be everywhere. If you're trying to be for content, they're going to be everywhere. Um, and, and, and small data it really doesn't have a lot of options to, I mean, this is like, you know, Gorilla or neighborhood community, but you see, it's like we're only offered, they are only offered a small opportunity, an opportunity right there in the court. What we have to do is, is try to, you know, raise our voices, uh, you know, work with, uh, with our regulators uh, and, and, and try to, to make access and, and uh, opportunity a little bit more, um, Available for, for you know for Latinos and, and African American and any small or minority group. You know, but what are the biggest obstacles that you face in trying to accomplish that? Well, I'll go back to the basics. You know what I already said is uh, is uh, probably with the best intention, multiple mergers uh, 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 in, 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 in acquisition coming allowed, and, and I think. Uh, you know, the, the, biggest, the biggest problem is all these companies make money off the traditional cable. That's, that's kind of the source of income. If you follow the money, that money is then reinvested in other things, like, you know, OTT products. Our biggest obstacle is entering the cable companies and you can get a kind of a fair, a fair uh, 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 treatment, right? Um, Again, 95%, 90, 95% of the channels are owned by four companies. Probably 99% of the money goes to four companies. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's between not having enough distribution and not getting paid, uh, or getting paid very little, that's, that's our, our, our data thing. Distribution and, and, and payments, or, you know, or, or licenses. These mergers need to be reviewed by the Justice Department, the Antitrust Division, and by the FTC. How are they helping us? How are they failing? Well, you know, you have two sides. A lot of people say, well, it's an open market. You know, people. All that is true. The problem is that nobody intended for the market to be where it is right now, but it is here. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make some adjustments. So we, we think that, you know, in this case, uh, HR 5056, the, the bill uh, that we were talking about, uh, try, try, try to resolve you know, that problem without changing the whole industry or making mandates or anything like that. Um, this is, I mean, we talk about like, you know, you know when they say, oh, faith, you come here, you know, and they're, you know, they're, uh, 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 you know, in Congress or interviewing this guy, what happened, you know, uh, with a misgame or control. The same happens in me. It's just not as obvious to a lot of people. There's four voices controlling the 300 channels, right? Uh, so, so I think it's overall in the whole media uh, industry, uh, whether that is, uh, you know, TV or, or, or you know, Internet, whatever. Um, there is, there is a uh, antitrust. There is a lot. There's few companies uh, using, you know, dominant behavior. I feel bad for the people companies because they're really people who just have their kind of style. And, uh, and uh, ultimately, the consumer is, uh, is is paying the price and you know, pay more for less. So, I you want to add? Yeah, but specific to, to the merger, the people TV and history are here today specifically because. When, uh, when Comcast in the morning made the merger, organizations like yourself, like Chile, like 
Levi came in and said, okay, we're gonna, we'll sign off on this, but you have to agree to certain things. And that's how the history of the other networks were born. Latest merger with um, Discovery and Warner, as far as I know, there was no type of agreement. So, you know, we, I think we missed out big time with that one. Because going back, and you're gonna, you said it more and more constantly today, but four companies running the show, where does that leave you? If we are able to get in, you'll see that we can work that we have content that's, there's an appetite for that, specifically because who we're going after, or the largest, you know, minority, if we're not a minority anymore, we'll be the majority very soon. Um, but we, you know, we do need some help. We do need to know. Um, are, are you, you know, ready to talk about a little bit of the project you're working on with the moms? Sure. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so specifically... Um, just explain to the audience about the problem. Of course. But going back to your earlier question uh, regarding content creation, um, with the development of this little thing here, I mean, you know, directors like Steven Soderbergh, um, Michelle Gondry, they've all created movies with this type of, you know, little contraption here. So the ability to create content is very, very easy nowadays. The, the question is finding the right content, finding the right people that are creating it, that are talking to your audience. The Palm Awards, um, this is, the, the easiest way to explain it is, let's say the, the, the Tony Awards in South, South Texas. I mean, it does get more South than this, and it's, high school uh, music. In Texas, you only think about football, high school football. But when I tell you that the quality of shows that some of these high schools are putting together nowadays, and I know about this just specifically because Felix connected us with them, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you are floored. You think these are college students at Juilliard performing. Some are okay, some are just outstanding. For anyone that was at Felix's Dementia Phase uh, event last, last fall, in September, two of the winners, um, two of the students performed, and it, it was, it's mind blowing to see a 16, 17 year old kid sing like this. So what we're doing is, we're giving them a, a platform, really, on, on TV, on cable TV. Um, and not because it's a benefit to Remo. Right now in South Texas, you can't see people on TV. You can't. We're not available. We're north in San Antonio, Dallas area on um, Comcast. So we're not even seeing it. But the ability to get their, their content to be seen across millions of households across the United States and being able to put that on your resume when these kids are applying for Berkeley, NYU, Juilliard, there's something to be said. But we have to give them a platform to be able to get their content out. And using Primo TV as, 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 as just that is for us, it's a no greater because we're talking to the same people. They're the target audience that we want, or, or not the one that we have for our channel. And no one else is giving them the time of day as far as coverage. So we will gladly work with them. We're going to be sponsoring. We're getting a scholarship. I'm going to be a judge. I don't know how good I'm going to be as a judge, but, uh, but I'll be there. I think we'll be there as well, Felix. So we're really looking forward uh, to, to starting off this relationship and continuing for a very long time. Uh, Christina, DISH is using a very different technology to sort of make its uh, services available to, to more rural consumers, especially. Can you talk to us about what that is, the new technology that you're using? Uh, well, we have a variety of technologies that um, even our linear uh, traditional TV content was primarily a rural community-based um, product uh, back in the early days. Uh, Dish was what was connecting um, a lot of those rural America, the demands, um, and all still today, we have, uh, over nine million customers are enjoying this content uh, through our satellite-based technology. Uh, 
I think what we're also building out today, um, we're, Dish is becoming a connectivity company. So along with our satellite connectivity, uh, we are building out this, this new 5G um, open RAN network that will allow us to deliver our content um, no matter where you are, quite frankly. I mean, rural America stands to benefit the most, which is arguably, obviously, you know, um, a lot of our digital divide and all the conversations that we've been having, we've been having here in Washington, D.C. over the last few years about making sure we're connecting that last mile. And I think that is where Dish is really focusing, uh, recognizing that a bulk of our customers and consumers are rural America. They need, of course, an equal chance at the um, digital economy that we are all actually really talking about right now. Um, Seventy-five percent of what we talked about was internet-based or connectivity-based, um, and I think that's what Dish and our, and our leaders recognize is that um, the future is wireless um, and, and connectivity. This isn't again against um, the wireline providers, but um, when we were looking at the landscape of connectivity, it was very appropriate for Dish to continue um, its tradition of wireless connectivity that started with our satellites. Um, but now it's evolved to include this new 5G, which is called Open RAN technology, which allows us to um, really diversify the, um, the equipment that we can use to deliver wireless connectivity to rural America. And what the end game of that is means it's lower cost to the consumer. We're going to have a uh, $25 a month unlimited talk, text, um, streaming plan. Uh, and that is because we're using new technology, this open brand technology, that allows us to build this network uh, without the cost of, say, some more legacy technology. And we also feature Spanish language program. Absolutely. So Sling, uh, which is our platform, uh, you know, our, our, our streaming platform. We actually were the first to market, um, believe it or not. Dish, Dish is uh, sometimes the first to market, but last year, uh, <laughs> Elephant um, Company. Um, but we introduced Sling um, a while ago uh, with the vision of, you know, living your program, everything, things are changing. Um, the way people consume their content is changing. So we wanted to diversify what we have to offer our, our customers. Um, and I think Sling is, you know, uh, I, I don't know, folks in the probably more of the younger set in the audience are, are familiar with Sling because it's a, a, associated with folks who are kind of moving away from more traditional ways of getting their, their content. Um, and it's a way that you can essentially aggregate um, all different channels, um, but on your time and on your dime. So in your budget, only gets you, you just want these five and that's what your budget um, allows you can have those channels um, as well as a regional package where say you are uh, a customer in Argentina um, your Spanish language content is not the same as the Spanish language content in Mexico or Colombia or Venezuela um, and our Sling platform recognizes that that just because the Spanish language is not a monolith allows flexibility for the consumer and allows flexibility for us to provide that content. Um, and so Sling really is different um, in terms of it's not your Disney Plus, um, it's not your Netflix, nothing that's not big fans of both. Um, it's really bringing all of this content together in a way that the consumer gets on their, their, their screen, you sign up and you get there and you pick your channels pick your packages, um, and you can customize them how you want. Um, what's really changing now is we're going to have this uh, the same where it was traditionally a subscription. We now have the option for free. So you can have free content. Um, you're going to have ads. It's ad supported. Um, but there you get your free content. And you don't have to worry. The part is harder. I think I'm going to get free from the uh, provider. I mean, uh, point of view is, um, you know, keeping paying customers pay, that's hard. Um, so the fact that we can offer a free ad-supported option 
uh, allows us to, again, customize for the consumer. And then lastly, the sling allows for over the air. So you can connect an antenna, you get your local channels from, you know, obviously uh, wherever your local market is. Um, and so you can have kind of a customized part, you know, uh, pay, part ad supported, and part over the air content. Um, so it, it's really exciting and it's really, really exciting to avail um, this. Two, two more follow-up questions. Um, do you ever see a day when uh, uh, Dish TV produces their own original content? And second, and last, and the second part of my question is, last night the president talked about that and non-compete uh, arguments and antitrust enforcement to prevent big online platforms from advantaging their own products. Do you see this advertising approach that you're taking would impact also children and marketing to children? Is there any way that you can um, prevent that from happening? Well, I chuckled when you were talking about Dish being some content because I was imagining with Charlie Irvin and kind of a, uh, who's our founder and owner in a stand-up comedy sketch. Uh, don't get that is on our horizon anytime soon. Uh, but don't hold me to that. Um, sure would be news to me. Uh, I think we allow the talented people who, who do this best. Um, we are the ones just making sure we're, we're connecting them to the consumer. Um, so no, I, I don't see that anytime soon. But hey, stranger things have happened. Uh, in terms of, I, I, I have a three-year-old, so I did not watch the same meeting last night. Uh, I was busy watching Disney Junior, uh, which really is um, uh, it was a key feature of our, our program with our TV last night. Uh, and honestly, this wouldn't really have a position on um, you know, anything mentioned by the president last night. But that's not fair. But in terms of making sure that we are uh, targeting children, um, obviously this is very relevant. It's the, the, the Disney, Disney Junior instead of the State of the Union. Um, I think there are two important core values that we kind of follow. Is Number one, making sure it's enriching educational value um, for children. And number two, protecting them from perhaps content they should not use. Um, and, 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 you know, this is Christina Mason talking and not Dish, but I'm pretty sure Dish would agree that um, targeting children and making money off of children is not obviously the best business plan for anyone. That is not. Uh, fair ground. I think where we see, um, in terms of this ad supported content, as long as um, we are following obviously what the entire industry follows is that it's appropriate and, and parents give consent, um, that we can do it in a way that's safe and enriching and still allow educational content um, from unique creators. Uh, to get out there. So Sling allows us that flexibility, again, this is my theme of today, uh, to allow these content creators to bring this wonderful content to children in a safe way, and in a way that makes sense for all parties involved. So, so I think one big difference between uh, MVPDs and, and other uh, other places where where individuals and, and kids can access content is that is that our content is curated, right? Uh, a 13-year-old or a 50-year-old can go on to you know uh, can access content from any variety of places, but uh, for uh, Disney for Disney Junior or for um, or for Peacock, uh, which is an MCU. Um, uh, Product of that, that app that, that is available. All of that content is, is curated for who it is intended for. Um, uh, just speaking to Christine's point about making sure that, that children are, are, are only accessing um, the, the content that is appropriate for them. And how does traditional cable competing with TikTok and Instagram and short content and all of the social media uh, that we see? Uh, in this? Basically, just competing for eyeballs as well. I think that there is a certain that there are 24 hours in a day, uh, and so there are lots of different uh, uh, opportunities for folks to access the content that they want. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not a TikToker, uh, but but I, I <laughs> but or, or on the Twitters very much. But there are uh, there there are lots of different ways to 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 get content. 
content. I, I don't know that our um, uh, that our uh, companies are, are uh, necessarily competing. I think that they that they can see as a as a as a compliment. I mean, often uh, you know they, they're that is just another way for um, for programmers uh, to make the content available to a to a wide uh, to a wide audience. Do you see that the cable is employing a social media strategy like it's never used before, including using all of those various platforms to get its content previewed, if you will? I, I think so. I think so. I mean, I you know again, I'm not I, I am not particularly well versed with the, on the social media side of things, uh, but but yes, I mean you know we we uh, it, it is our companies meet their viewers where they are. And, uh, and it is important to, uh, to understand that we are, as I said at the beginning, the media landscape is changing uh, in, in a way that we have never experienced before. Uh, and uh, it, it is, uh, it, it's, it's critical um, uh, to make sure that you know, the content that, uh, that a, a, a viewer and a customer wants are available in, in all kinds of different places and all kinds of different um, um, mediums to access that. So yes. Um, so what separates your content from other children's programming? What makes your content um, very valuable for what you offer to our Who is it for? So uh, in case of Pete's three, again, uh, three to seven years of age, um, we are, uh, we, our promise is, you know, parent-proof environment in, in content that is safe for the kids all day. We're the only channel that partnered with Common Sense Media, for example, uh, you know, it's channel for kids, partnered with Common Sense Media. They, I don't know if you know who Common Sense Media is, it's a non-for-profit in San Francisco. They've been out there for 25 years, and they help uh, not, uh, parents navigate the youth all day. So if you were someone who download a game or read a book or watch a movie, you can, you can go to their search engine and, 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 and see their reviews. So we review, we say we are trying to prove, but uh, anybody can say that. So what we do is we have a, uh, we get all of our content goes through Common Sense Media, they review it, and they give it age appropriateness, and then, and then uh, reviews with quality. The quality can be good or bad. For example, it could be great for you know, educational value or positive for our models, which is where we focus, but it could also be, you know, you know, kind of another language or violence or consumerism, which are trying to stay away from. Or the only channel who puts this uh, exactly thrill before every show in or DOD. Um, and I think that separates not only because we have a promise and a DNA, but also we deliver on that. People never, you'll never see, uh, you know, what parents don't want, like, you know, disrespect or bad language or, or sex or, or, you know, or any, any of that uh, in, uh, in any of our shows, you know, because it's curated, uh, truly curated, not only with a, uh, a promise to ourselves and, and to our, you know, uh, viewers and, and their guardians, uh, but also because we have a contract with a cable company that requires us to deliver certain content. And going back to the previous question, that's what makes that relationship between the, 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 the programmer and, and, and cable provider and, and, the, and the subscriber a, a safer, you know, because a safer relationship because the content is going to be created. Cable company doesn't want to be doing that in theory, and you have to deliver that kind of content. When you go straight to the internet, it, maybe your product is great, but there are other people out there who, you know, when the, when the, when the very slow, the very for entry is low, you can put anything out there, and then it's, that's when your kid is watching maybe a show that you like, and five minutes after, you don't know what they're watching because it's, you know, it's all algorithm and not really related, so it's going to be whatever is next. Um, so you know, for us, it's just a, a good promise and, and the bigger, you know? What, what people sometimes tell us, because obviously we compete with big brands like Disney or food, et cetera, is that everybody wants that. And everybody can say that. But we, that's what we call with this uh, third party reviewer. And we've won like maybe 15 or 20 awards in the last five years. But we compete with them for, you know, best content, best show, you know, three to seven years of age, or, or you know, there are different categories. And uh, sometimes Disney wins, sometimes NBC Universal, or sorry, uh, Universal Kids wins. Sometimes we win. And when we compete and, and we have, a, you know, our channels in the same base, um, distribution-wise, 
our numbers are there. Um, we, you know, we have the same number of households or more or more minutes or less minutes, but it's always there, you know, very similar um, usage. Um, but our promise is different. We want to be the channel that anybody, you know, if you have kids, that's a channel you, you know, it's the channel I want my kids to watch, because they're too old, whatever. Uh, I would have liked them to watch. <laughs> If you say one last sure. thing on kids that I, that I think is really important to, to mention, I have a five-year-old, and so we were watching the movie last night as, as well. Uh, our, 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 uh, our operators uh, build in parental controls by design from the ground up, so you are able to restrict what, based on ratings and, and, and type of content, and I would imagine DISH has, has, a, very, has a very similar parental uh, 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 control by design. On the programmer side, if you are watching these apps, whether it's the Asian Go app, the Doc app, the Paramount Plus app, uh, the parental controls are also baked in by design. Uh, and so it's just another another safeguard, another layer of, of, of safety to make sure that, that uh, in addition to the curation, uh, that, uh, that uh, another, another, another layer of connection is that the children are accessing the content that the parents deem appropriate. I'd like to ask the panel the same question, and that is what advice would you give to emerging content creators who are desperately trying to pursue uh, this as a career? What advice would you give them? The person who says, don't give up. Unfortunately, it comes down to who receives your content, who receives your script, your logline on that day, the mood that they're in, whether or not they have a preconceived idea of what the topic is that you're trying to tell. I've seen that firsthand. Um, I've seen people throw away scripts in the garbage can just because they're in a bad mood. So the good thing is that there is people or organizations that are starving for content. They're starving for content. Everyone wants something so that the other, the competition, doesn't happen. You see it from all the way to the small guys, all the way to the top. That's why you see, you know, Paramount in Latin America or Viacom at the time just buying up everyone in Argentina and Chile so they can have the production houses to create their kind of series so that no one else can do it. So that they can now put it on Paramount Plus or sell it, you know, locally, you know, kind of regionally local. Um, there's a lot of opportunities out there to, to get uh, mentorship, to get your foot in the door, to be able to get your foot in the door. So it's finding the organizations through your schools, through um, groups like the for example, on the you know, West Coast, there's other ones all, all over that can really help you and teach you what it is that you need to do for that, you know, that 50 second elevator pitch that you're going to do, or that two line lot line that you're going to try and sell your 120 page script. So be persistent, don't take no for an answer. Every no is just another way for you to get in somewhere else. Um, and like I told you know, some of the students at least spoken to do this in the past is give me a call. If I can help you, I guarantee I can find someone like that. Yeah. Just kidding. Uh, I, think, I think you did an excellent job. I am not a content creator, and I, I urge you to seek counsel from folks that have way more experience than I. But at least from the MVP over the top, um, Perspective. I think this is a time for optimism. I think never in the history of this kind of um, program, TV program, content creation, was there so much opportunity coming over the horizon and so many avenues and lanes for this content um, to, to find consumers and, and um, your audiences. So uh, I urge optimism. Oh, again, all of the, the things that my, my colleague uh, asked me, I think, goes for life, generally, honestly, for all of us. I think we can write a book on that. Uh, but typically, keeping at it and, and keeping your head up, and I think the way our businesses are shifting, 
will allow for a more diversity of voices and the way that consumers and audiences are shifting, they're going to demand it. So. First of all, work with organizations like yours, Felix. Uh, you have done tremendous work uh, over the years, and um, I, I, I know speak for lots of folks in this room and who are not here that are appreciative of all the efforts to try to increase diversity in the content and, and, and production. Secondly, uh, a lot of our member companies uh, have programs in place, uh, uh, currently in place, to help increase uh, the number of diverse directors, content producers, showrunners. Uh, NBCU and Telemundo uh, launched NBCU Launch, um, which is a, a program that's intended to, uh, to help increase uh, Latina directors, um, uh, and, and a similar program for, um, for, for, Latino, for Latino directors as well. Um, uh, from the NCTA perspective, we uh, are, are strong supporters of the Walter Gates Foundation, uh, one of the uh, preeminent uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, uh, nonprofits in the, in, the, in the program space. And so the Walter Gates Foundation every year hosts what's called the Hollywood Creative Forum. Uh, it is a, it's a week-long event out in Los Angeles uh, where uh, uh, interested directors, interested writers, interested showrunners are partnered with seasoned people in the industry. So, so as Mike was saying, you know, sometimes there's a bad, uh, somebody has a bad day, the greatest script in the trash, or maybe the best script that they ever but the person's having a bad day. Hollywood Creative Forum uh, is an incredible program and it breaks down those barriers and, and pairs an, an, an interested uh, individual who wants to break into the business uh, but has so far been unable to do so with an experienced uh, uh, showrunner or a director or a producer so that script can be shared and so those conversations can take place. And so if anybody's interested in Hollywood Creative Forum, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to me and have to connect you with, uh, with our Walter Gates Foundation uh, team. Uh, but it is truly an incredible program. Uh, and, and the alumni of, of the many of the alumni of that program have gone on to produce those shows, to direct those shows. Um, and uh, so it's a great success for the industry. I was going to say, Cole, in the piece of this, uh, Cole feels this because he has the answers, but there are two things, right? Like, uh, first, um, you, you want to put your show out there, and, 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 you know, from that side, you know, just it's still your story, be truthful, you know, don't change your DNA, don't follow what, you know, you know what's, uh, you know, in fashion, just be yourself, tell your story, you can be, uh, those, those, I think that's, that's something that we don't, we don't, we don't see a lot of today. It's like every, you know, just a close certain molds. But be yourself. It's going to be hard, but be there. Uh, that's, that's probably, you know, the story you want to tell. But the other, the other side is, 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 is again, it's like, how do I make money? How do I monetize? You know, where is it? And for me, it's like, if you're here, you're in the right place. Continue to go support these organizations because they're trying to fight the same fight. Um, this is here that if you didn't know about the foundation of the EU field, it's now, you know, you have, now you have two more leads. Um, and everybody who is here in, in, in similar you know, forums like this um, is trying to get the same, you know, breakthrough, new opportunity, better opportunities. And, and if we don't tell our story from a business side, there's really nothing to be solved. So come here, support, ask questions, uh, and, and, and again, you know, it's, you're in the right place, but you to do this. Before we go to Q&A, final question. What are you watching on TV? And what would you like to see as a show that isn't on TV? Michael? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just finished uh, Kaleidoscope on Netflix. Um, it is really interesting the way how the viewer has secured the way they watch the series, which is, I'm sure that's going to be Copycat. You're going to see that all over the place now. Um, 
really invested right now in the last of us on the um, This is from a perfect perspective. A good friend of his, his sister who Craig Prescott, so hopefully he does, he does he any help. He's blowing up all over the place. Um, it's a great show. Um, then just have a list of, I watch way too much TV. I watch way too much TV. Wow, what do I want to see? Oh, I, 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 I'd say recreate something from the 80s, because I'm, you know, old school and maybe even kind of like a modern day $6 million man would be really cool to see. You know, I think that might be the worst actually, so I don't know. I don't really put too much time on it. I already it. I
for sending him. Uh, I like wireless and I uh, also like the TV. It's so cheap. Uh, so, uh, I watch TV like everybody else does. You know, I need to get depressed, I watch the news. I need to get excited, I watch sports. Uh, my grandfather, so I watch this, everything from Mickey Mouse to Frozen. You know, uh, but I'm okay. <laughs> uh, I'm done. Questions? Two part question here. Number one, outside of the dish, the other folks that have their own uh, TV, their own television, uh, do you charge for subscription? Number one, uh, do you charge subscription for it, or are you looking to place your TV into somebody else's program? And number two, coming back, outside of uh, dish, what kind of infrastructure do you own? for the lease infrastructure. What I'm talking about is anywhere from uh, cable, satellite, um, data, data centers, or at least that centers we do, where all the content exchanges that comes in and out of the brand and comes in and out through the exchanges and goes right out into a rural community. Okay? Take it any way you want. Sure. So our three networks are carried specifically, strictly, on linear TV. So from a dish to a Comcast, to a Spectrum, to direct TV, all of our content is carried in that type of service. Um, we do get a subscriber fee through the agreements that we have with the MVPDs. We don't charge on our own for that type of service. Um, we can't, through the agreements that we have, I can't offer my network to uh, a dish and they pay me a subscriber fee and I can go out and create a TV, a TV everywhere type of format where they can go on, benefit it, and come and see that same channel for $4.99 a month. We don't, we don't have that capability through because of the agreements that we have with the, with the cable operator. Um, as far as infrastructure is concerned, um, our three networks are fully operated in Doral, in Miami, Florida. Um, all of the content that we acquire from all over the world, um, our programming team goes to all the markets from the Cons, the Cons of America, the South of Miami, acquiring uh, shows, uh, series. We dub everything in Spanish, in-house, into a neutral accent, specifically, even if the content, let's say, is from Spain, or, or Venezuela, or Colombia, or Mexico, or Venezuela, um, we dub it, again, in a neutral uh, accent, specifically so when someone watches it, they can say this is a channel for Cubans, for Mexicans, or Venezuelans. It's not. You cannot tell the accent. But we do all that in house. We edit all of our content, similar to what I was sort of saying. Um, you will never see or hear anything appropriate on our, on our, on our networks. We cut all of that out. Um, any type of excessive violence is taken out, any foul language is taken out, the idea is to maintain a very safe space for the entire family. Um, I use myself as an example, you know, growing up, I'm a Cuban American, with my parents, my grandparents, in the house. Uh, that's the channel then, is for, for the little kid at home, all the way to the abuelos inside the house. So anyone can sit down on the couch, or wherever, and watch that channel the entire day, and never see or hear anything appropriate. Our master control is right down the road from us. We send all of our content to the fiber, um, and it gets sent out to the dishes, right to these charts of the world. Um, and we, we, we house everything, we hold everything in the house. This is it. I don't know if that answers your question. Thank you. Same thing, it's uh, the traditional you know, uh, uh, revenue model for us, uh, the cable world, so we get paid. Uh, per month per subscriber fee by the cable operator or sound operator. Uh, a lot of our content for one channel, which is uh, Inglés Para Todos, the one that is ESL. On the key side, we, you know, as we were saying, we go to all these uh, markets around the world and license nice content because, you know, you know fix better our problems. Um, from an operational perspective, we don't own satellites or anything like that, and third party does that, uh, trying to make it efficient. Uh, and uh, we deliver our content via fiber satellite at night feet, depending on what it is and to do. Uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of what 
I don't know if that answers the point of your question. That's not real quick. Anyone else? Hello, my name is Andreas Gomez, I'm a Chile global leader. And this is kind of a two-part question. Um, so first of all, I'd like to kind of come to you from, as a, you know, some of these, these college graduate that, you know, try to stretch money every dollar counts with, with every aspect of life. So one thing everyone wants to do is, you know, get their entertainment, watch TV, watch sports, watch news. Um, so yes, I, I, I do feel like streaming services like Netflix, um, Disney Plus, Hulu, they are dominating, you know, the kind of the entertainment aspect of everything. But nowadays I feel like aside from that, uh, let's say for sports, realistically you can see anything you want for free online. I can I can search up, you know, my Nikki game online and I can watch it for free, no strings attached, I can watch anything I want. What would be the appeal to, you know, go ahead and pay for a TV provider and why what, what's the benefit of that when everything is free online? Well, um, yes, there's a lot of things that are free on the internet. But if you can watch a uh, Miami King game here on the internet, it's 45 years ago. So it should be. Um, <laughs> someone, someone's putting it out there. It, 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 that's, that's illegal. There, 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 there's a lot of content out there, true. Yeah. companies try to not try in that con in the contract what they pay you for cannot be available for free because it's premium content right so that, that's how that's the relationship is I'll, I'll carry your pay but your content is this is what people have sold to the you know uh, final uh, user for a fee so you can't put it out there because otherwise what am I doing what am I paying you right uh, Yes, there is a lot of content out there. You can watch that content, but none of the content that is on the on, on, on the cable provider should be available for you to make. Uh, you may find some episodes for whole seasons that you would find, or you shouldn't find, for example, if Paramount is going to you know, have the season finale for Yellowstone tomorrow, you won't find that out there. And if you do, is someone probably going, you know, and, and going around the kind of the um, I, I actually spent an uh, early part of my career in um, anti-piracy litigation at Sony Pictures Entertainment. Um, this, I don't want to date myself, but this was a little bit before kind of the landscape we have now. This is back when folks, I don't, you probably don't even know what a torrent is or, or a master or anything, but um, this is what, it's a little bit different.
movies like myself, we hate commercials. We're going to have you know a paid service. Um, but recognizing that a lot of content is free, and folks don't want that monthly bill. I think you're going to see a lot of platforms uh, uh, figure out how to capture your market. Do you think that Disney will also crack down on password sharing? Um, that is again a, a. I think that's why the ad-supported path for us is more realistic. Where if it's free, then share. You know, share with more eyeballs and more eyeballs. It doesn't hurt us. Uh, it doesn't hurt the content creators because they're getting fifty percent of those ad shares. Um, I think that's why, why you see this disruption. It's because we were trying to crack the code of like how, to, I, you know, our, our programming side, they would say the hardest part is keeping a paying customer. How do you keep, um, make the customer sticky? That's all of our, our goals. Um, and so what I think we're seeing is this pivot to giving optionality of, of maybe free content um, with ads. Um, that allows us to kind of uh, uh, target that password sharing problem that we, I mean, Netflix, I, I'm hoping they, I don't know how, I don't want to speak to Netflix, um, but they're trying innovative ways. I don't know how the market will react to it, meaning the consumer market. Um, we are trying hard to you know, just give it for free and, and just let's get more items. Uh, I would just say feels on the um, advertising side. Uh, I think that that, that could be a, a potential tool for uh, a program to have uh, additional revenue that's brought in to be used to uh, for for greater distribution for increased carriage. Um, and so uh, the the advocacy is is really important. I appreciate my seat bringing that up. Uh, just one 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 plug on the on the privacy thing. Um, the, the there are the, the cable uh, operator uh, cable operators employ directly more than three and a half million people across the country. Programmers employ an untold number of people around the country. Think about the uh, and those are and those are direct employees. Think about the suppliers uh, that that supply the studios with the the, the uh, equipment that they use. Um, you, you start to snowball out, and um, uh, you know, if, you're, if you're getting something um, you know, online for free that you should not be that you shouldn't be getting, um, it, it, it is not you know impacting the, the, the person at the top. It's impact. It has a it has a huge snowball effect. Um, nationwide on millions upon millions of people who either directly or indirectly support this industry and the main customers this industry. Hello, President. Um, yes, I'm uh, Andrew Voss. I'm just going to two of the first one. As an investor, I'm not watching you know, a lot of cartoons on the And um, we have the right to use it. Unbelievably, if you have the ticket, a month. So one of the questions is, and I think I've heard a little about it here, was choice. Can we just choose a channel for you? Because I don't watch uh, 200 channels. I watch maybe 10. One. And I think that some of the uh, paper providers do it. And then two, um, about piracy, I mean, I think people say, man, you got to check out this thing called Falcon TV. For 20 bucks a month, you get five TVs, and on top of that, you get thousands of on-demand movies, you get all the sports, you got all the Hispanic channels from all over the world. And I'm saying to myself, do I really want to do that? Uh, one, because I'm, I'm obviously, there's no such thing as free, so there's probably with piracy. Uh, bet, that's the competition that I think you're facing in the fact that Cost of the service plus on top of that, the cell phone and the internet and all that. So, how does the industry have a good sense of this question for the same Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay, I'll finish. We're just looking for that's a comment, and I think you guys are the right person to answer those questions. Thank you. I, I have an easy answer, but my, my answer is very easy. Um, Sling is recognizing that um, desire for optionality at a, at a cheaper price.
price instead of um, you know the 400 channels, you get the 10 you watch for the price of those 10. Um, I think it starts at three bucks, going up to 10 bucks per channel, depending on how premium the channel is. Um, but you do that have that optionality where if you want to pay 20 bucks a month, and you can really um, figure out what content you want to be and again, when it comes to these to be screws, you get all this premium content for the regular abstract. It's like the pirate, and I think my here had a very good insight that who knows what you're signing up for in terms of viruses and other things that um, they're going to try and steal data from you. Um, so yes, nothing is ever free. Um, I try and emphasize this to my son all the time. Um, if they, you're streaming something, and if, if they, you're, they want into your computer, they're getting data somehow. Um, so it is, you've got to be careful about that. And I would just add that uh, on uh, WPDs on, on the cable side, there's cross-subsidization of channels. But if you think about uh, what, what you were talking about, was sort of an a la carte, right? Um, think about if, if you choose, if you choose your, your, the, the channels that you watch and screen them, uh, uh, or, or rather, not necessarily the people in this room, but uh, America, the, the, the American public more widely chooses the channels that, 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 uh, they, that they watch. Who is who's going to be left out? Those, who, who, who are those who are those customers? Not what channels are they not going to select? Those are going to be the diverse programmers. Um, and so, to go back to my first point about linear TV, it's nice to be able to, to click the channel and find something new that you would have never necessarily had exposure to. Um, and and uh, if you move to a part model, it, 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 it takes eyeballs, potential eyeballs away from the very, um, you know, micro programmers that we have an interest in, 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 in supporting and caring. Thank you. Um,
Uh, although if you're a Gen Xer, you're going to show it. If you're not a Gen Xer, you're younger, you will not be able to show it. It's all age and stuff. There used to be a show called Cowboys. They wrote a single mom that worked in a diaper. The guy that owned the diaper was named Nail. It was Nail's diaper. And there was an episode of Alice where Alice was trying to wear where this lady named Flo was trying to teach Alice's son's comedy house built in Mississippi. And she said, this house is built in my pretty letter, pretty letter I, pretty letter, pretty letter I, punch back, punch back. And literally, everybody in school the next day, I was like fourth or fifth grade, everybody in school the next day was going around, and yeah, my pretty letter, pretty letter I. But it's a lot different now, because the, the program in it is, is much more spread out, and, and Alice you know, wasn't a very diverse show, right? Uh, it was uh, a show that, uh, that, that we all have you know, memories about it. Things on those shows like that, it just wasn't about the person. And so that's what I'm here to talk about today. And I want to thank Mary Ann and the Commercial Perspective Fusion for having me come here to speak. Um, last year, I was fortunate to talk with everyone that I the first on how we wanted to close uh, the digital divide. And I'm actually trying to come up with my staff on how I can talk about the digital divide better in the district, because I don't that's, that's, that's such a tech, almost a tech sounding term, but I don't think people out in the communities really know what digital divide means. Uh, and so I'm actually trying to figure out what we on how we're talking about the digital divide, and how we can communicate that in our efforts to increase uh, access to communities uh, to where they, they really understand it. Uh, but today's topic, Hispanic representation to me is one that I'm kind of personally uh, passionate about and, uh, and determined uh, to fight about in this particular Congress. A Latino underrepresentation in the media uh, is an issue that I have raised in the past with my colleagues on the Congress Committee uh, and uh, this committee. Uh, and then this Congress will look forward to once again reaching across the aisle uh, to uh, talk about the need to increase Hispanic representation across the media industry. Uh, this impacts uh, the district that I represent, which is the majority Hispanic, our communities, our workforce, our kids. Uh, and the truth is today uh, that Hispanic representation uh, in the media isn't keeping up with the first melting pot that continues to unfold in our country. We are a nation of immigrants. Uh, the Hispanic community makes up uh, nearly 20% of the country uh, and has a buying power of about one point. Uh, $9 trillion dollars uh, in our economy. Uh, and it's no secret uh, that their contributions are critical uh, to America's economic and social success, particularly uh, in my state of Texas. Uh, unfortunately, uh, their stories really remain almost non existent uh, from the American area. Uh, last year, the GAO released a series of reports on the underrepresentation of Hispanics in the American media industry, and that includes film, uh, television news, uh, and publishing sector. And one statistic that jumped out to me is that the GAO uh, is finding uh, that in the last decade, uh, data shows that there has only been a 1% increase uh, in Hispanic community representation in the uh, uh, Again, in the last 10 years, there's only been a 1% increase. Uh, that's obviously something that needs to change. Uh, it figures even worse when it comes to Latinos, which have an even much lower representation. Uh, from 2010 to 2019, Hispanic representation in the media grew at a smaller rate uh, than Hispanic representation in the non media workforce. Uh, the GAO also confirmed that Hispanic media workers are significantly more likely to work in service roles than in management roles. 19% uh, of service workers versus 3% in senior and executive management roles. Uh, that's a huge problem uh, in our society, particularly right now, uh, as a lot of the technology that was just being built out of this panel continues to unfold because uh, history shows us that when things start to unfold, that's when we want to be a part of it. That's when the wealth is being created. That's when the influence is being created. And we want to be that's the big one uh, in any industry. And uh, we can't stand by uh, while Latinos and other unrepresented groups are left out of uh, influences of movies, television, books, and chain stores with really addressing uh, numerous challenges that contribute to world representation of the status of the industry. There are obviously financial barriers, uh, uh, and we also need to tackle the educational hurdles uh, that the 
extent on a new basis. Uh, so we can continue uh, to access education, uh, training, and those opportunities that will allow people, again, to be in the best industry. Uh, and we also have to address the lack of diversity in the government's agents uh, and the executives. And so uh, with that, I want to thank everybody for letting me come and talk about this. I think that is hugely important. And again, as this, uh, as, 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 as this uh, topic and this industry continues to grow, we just need to continue to have this discussion because, again, you want to be on the ground floor. Uh, and how that always tell you, um, again, it's been fascinating about the panel was talking about. These streaming services are so important. And, I'll, and, and especially at the end of the night, I don't like to watch a lot of the news. Because I'm sleeping on the blinds, I'm going to get to sleep. I need to step down and sleep on the night. So I'm like, I, I need to be able to wind it down so I can give me a really good night's, a good night's sleep. And a lot of times I will watch older shows to get a good night's sleep. And, you know, and that's my choice to watch the older shows, right? You know, there's not a lot of diversity in, in a lot of older shows. I watch, I watch a lot of law. Uh, I love watching the Westerns. You know, I love watching the Rock for Fowls. And I love watching the old police detective shows. There's not a lot of diversity in there, but the important things that are certainly more diversity across screen platforms so people can choose what they want to watch. These older shows for people like me that are Gen Xers, that's a part of how we grew up. And so those, we remember our grandparents and our parents watching the Iron Sides and watching these various television shows. And so they're always going to be a part of our and embrace that. The fact that there was no diversity in those shows, we're still going to want to watch those to remember the old times and uh, the good times that we had and the things that may, 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 may or may not still be with us. Uh, but the important thing before is that we have diversity. And so our kids and our grandchildren uh, will have a different view of all of this and diversity will be more. Thank you.
theory, right? In the sense that everything was axiom neutral, uh, so you cannot design, sorry, tell for which country was meant to be, right? How does that affect that simulation process with the space and the Thank you, Reverend. I think one of the things that, that, that we try to do, at least in the is we try to portray our, the Hispanic in a way that we feel we want to portray. Um, we know that there's a considerable amount of content out there that, um, that's available for uh, Hispanics. Um, I will say that a lot of that content doesn't portray us in the best way. Um, specifically because we are not all just the help, we're not just the partner, we're TV executives, leaders of nonprofit Hispanic leadership organizations, or senators, congressmen. Um, the first Hispanic U.S. president has already been born. Think about that. That person has already been born. There's more to us than just that, and that's how we try to portray our content. We, we don't care to you specifically for the reason so that we're not seen as too right or too left. We do carry um, um, current affairs type content, but showcasing um, Hispanics in a way that, that uplifts that uplifts the community. If we focus our, our content specifically to one in Miami, the, the Cubans back in the day when we were all the Miami's as Cubans, Miami's not that anymore. You know, there's Weston, which is not all Western Square. Doral, Doral is, you know, Peruvian, Venezuelan, Dominican, Colombian, Brazilian, Cuban. There's too many of us. There's too many of us to try to pigeonhole content to one group. Some people might want to do that, but we don't. We feel that we can all get together in such a way that, uh, that our content really shows us in such a way that helps help us want to be better. Uh, really quick, Scream was an example. We, it was now going on, just a couple years ago, through a grant the National Science Foundation working with Arizona State University, we created, well, Arizona State University created a program called STEM Neo, which was a computer program where middle school kids can go answer a bunch of questions and learn about different fields of STEM. We joined them, we created a series, a 13 episode series, where we went across the country interviewing Hispanics from all different areas of STEM, not just the doctors, not just the scientists. Um, the the Mexican-American who went to Yale, who astronaut who worked on the Mars rover. No one knows about that guy. But when I went to Arizona, um, actually San Antonio, to do a, kind of like a symposium where they met with Arizona State University, we showed an episode. At the end of the episode, sixth grade girl comes up and he said, I had no idea what engineering was. I want to be an engineer. That alone, why? That alone was worth the flight, worth the cost of production. But if they don't see themselves, with someone with the last name of Jimenez, or Fernandez, or Rodriguez, or Garcia, they see themselves and now they can say, I can do that too. And that's how we try to, uh, that's really how we try to focus on all of our content. Uh, we start four problems. You know, I, it, there's a phrase, if you can't see it, you can't be it. And so much of it is how the quality of content and how the, the teams are presented in a contemporary Modern way, and uh, I will give you an example of Coda, uh, which you may have seen, which last year won the Academy Award for Best Picture. It's about a deaf family that has a hearing daughter who wants to sing, and the agent of change is Eugenio Derbez, a music teacher, and he comes into that role organically. No one questions his identity. No one challenges why he's there. He's absolutely the music teacher who happens to be of a Latino heritage. And that kind of seamless integration into the narrative is what creates progress in terms of image representation. And that's what we need to see more. We, for us, uh, you know, we offer a bunch of content from around the world, between a bunch of different countries, especially in our, on our English Paracolos digital channel. Um, we try to bring the best movies and series from, you know, Mexico and Spain. So, so, so 
so, uh, you know, so, so people can see themselves in usual Spanish as well. What we try to do there in order to, you know, for advancement is uh, the channel has like, two sides. It's the official, um, the official side, uh, and the entertaining, entertaining side. On the, on the entertaining side, every movie we have, at least for example in Spanish, it's subtitled in English, and by versa, it's a Hollywood movie. Because if you can, you can watch it, and you can choose the language, and the subtitle will be the opposite. So you can practice, you know, uh, there's so many lessons in the channel where you, where you go and you know, talk about uh, either, either situational teaching, like the English you need to know if you are, you know, customs or in a pharmacy or the bank. But there is also the entertaining, so the entertaining side, uh, where, where you can just watch a movie that's set in, 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 how you, uh, in the dual line, whether you want to read and practice your comprehension or, or, or you know, or, or, or your. Uh, your reading skills, or, so we, we try to do that on the content side and try to help people, by definition, with that channel advancing their life in the United States. Uh, but we also try to do is this, uh, try to create, uh, you know, uh, what, what we, I, we are already here, we already have the channel, and we're working with, uh, with regulators in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, different organizations in DC, so that more people like us have a chance, you know, and that's advancement from a business perspective, and it's specifically about uh, minority, but also independent, right, because sometimes you try to put water to the issue, but the issue is that if you're small, it's hard to grow or, 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 or have a successful business. Um, it just happens that, you know, I'm from Peru and I'm, you know, Latino, but it could be, I could be from any country, I could be, I could be a little woman, it would be the same issue. So it's more about trying to represent and tell the advance that you know, business or minority business or independent business. Not that you have the issue, you see your audience, we're all here to move forward. And it, that's kind of what we do on the, the public affairs side, but also the content, as I said, we try to do uh, uh, whatever is best for the user. And obviously, we, we, in, in the case of the, our study channel, DSL, uh, it's just a couple of advances because it's hard. It's a big role. No one has time or money to spend in a, on a you know, regular university or a key institute for yourself. Thank you. And I think we're going to leave it there and close out our panel. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Marianne. So that's it. Please join me in a round of applause for our speakers. I'm going to try to listen to the questions, but don't be surprised if you know there's part two um, to this discussion. Um, what I normally say to at the end of these conversations is that we are also very blessed to be here and to be able to convene and have this conversation. We were able to live stream you know, part of the conversation here as well, and so. Now it's our obligation, I think a part of you know, being um, part of public service is to take this information and share it with other people. And what can you do and how can you do that to help expand the conversation, contribute, connect with each other. Um, we shouldn't just wait to be connected here and kind of ask each other questions and have an idea or a thought, but the whole idea is that we actually get together, we do something. We respond to each other's requests for information, we share, we invite each other to different activities. Um, and at the same time, we also do our best to, when we need to, invite ourselves into other conversations and invite ourselves into other tables and other rooms because, unfortunately, many of us with communities of color are not always invited. And so this is an opportunity to see how do we See if we can get around that script being thrown away in the garbage, right? And trying to help each other. So when somebody has an idea, or they come to you and they need a little support or some funding or connection, please do it. Be the person that makes the change. It doesn't have to be monumental. They're little pieces at a time. So thank you again. Um, hope everybody 